Yeah, thanks. You're welcome. I'm going to present you the, I, I put the, the new term of PTA, the POPA, the percutaneous balloon angioplasty, and obstructive, obstructed peripheral artery disease using uh, the Minerva device. So, uh, peripheral artery disease, PAD, uh, we always begin with medical treatment and uh, we prescribe for this patient uh, aspirin, silostazol, and estatin, uh, and always begin uh, the medical treatment. And um, we classify this patient with PED, and we are talking about the patient with Fontaine 4 or the classification router 4, 4, or 5, or a patient with tissue loss or critical limb ischemia. Um, particularly, I, I think that I avoid the treatment for cough claudications. And most of the time, I use the medical treatment. Mm -hmm. And then I treat PAD only for patients with two loss or CLI. And mm -hmm. Rarely patients... За един uh, периферен балон Бросмет, uh, който е 018, но това си я виждам с изненадващо, че има 1,5 на 200, което това е впечатляващо и сега показва проучването. Пия, Кейта, може ли да мьюти себе си? Благодаря. Благодаря. Благодаря, ги върнете на тези микрофони. Може ли да мьюти себе си? Да, това е окей. Yeah, it's okay. And no, no problem. And it's the problem, the online uh, presentation. This is a very common. So after classifying this patient, say PAD, Fontaine 4, Rotor 4, 4 or 5, we, I, am, I am going to present you uh, the two patients that uh, we use uh, balloon to treatment. So, uh, this patient that we treated, these patients with stage three or four of Fontaine uh, uh, classifications or uh, rotor four, two, two or three. So, I, I like to use this device because some reasons and the the low type uh, profile uh, is is the good uh, the, the features of the device uh, are good and then the low type profile is good to entry the lesion the, the characteristic of the hydrophilic coating is is good because uh, I know, uh, I think that there is very different the device uh, that I use nowadays that, <laughs> that I use it. Uh, these guys turn off the microphones and, and then uh, is, it's, I think that is very different. The, the, the device, the, uh, the features of the device uh, using nowadays that I use it 10 years ago. And then, so uh, the profile and the navigation and the, the I think the pushability, the device, the Minerva device, uh, really, really good because we, we have the movement one by one when you use the shaft and the movement of the tip and the movement of the balloon. 
it's it's very good to is a very um, um, good to work and good to uh, pushability and is is change good results uh, change in good results clinical results so this is the technical specification the catheter wire these devices are all tw is all over the wire and we have different types of balloons different uh, diameters and different lengths and it's a very interesting features because if you treat for example uh, fistulas uh, we need normally the small shafts and if you cross the the, the lesion uh, for example if you enter and the, the puncture is in a femoral a right femoral artery and you need to treat the femoral superficial artery in another leg, we have the shaft good to cross the lesion. The nominal, the nominal pressure is 6 atm normally, and we reach the size of balloon with 6 atm, but normally, I use, normally the physicians use 10 or 12 ATM. Uh, and I, I keep uh, for five minutes too. And then and I think the results uh, could be better when you keep five minutes. So, and the case, uh, this case is uh, a female with 85 years old, or these patients have uh, cardiac problems and the revascularization, they open uh, revascularization uh, is very complicated because the patient uh, has a high risk for open surgery. Then the, the arteries is small, yeah? And then we have the obstruction of popliteal artery and the patient has a tissue loss and critical, critical limb ischemia, ischemia uh, with pain. And we puncture the, the right femoral common artery and we cross over the iliac artery and put the balloon in another leg and the, and the left side and put the balloon in the lesion. And after that, I use the DIB um, freeway in this case, uh, because this patient uh, had a revascularization a couple of years ago and then the structure uh, caused by hyperplasia. And then after that, the, the result, the follow-up of the patient, the pain uh, is over and the patient was very good, uh, is very good now. And this patient is charged of hospital. Uh, after uh, three days, and now uh, and she is okay. The second patient. So in this case, I use uh, Minerva balloon with freeway balloon. And then I think for hyperplasia is, uh, I think that it uh, can be better results. And the second patient, a seven, five years old smoker with breast pain. And in their arteriography show uh, the occlude of the femoral superficial artery and the deep uh, femoral artery. Uh, we have some branches 
And in this top, in the right side, we can see the full uh, reputation, the, the full runoff of the artery. And, but we have, we still have the popliteal and tibial, uh, anterior tibial and fibular artery. And then we perform uh, the contralateral access to and cross the lesion. And uh, we uh, uh, can recanalize the lesion and put the wider wire and we can recanalization the artery, the femoral superficial artery. But after the PTA, we, we can see the section of the artery. Then uh, we put the self spankable stents to, to fix the lesion because um, I think that the high risk uh, for occlusion, the proximal artery. And we put the, the self expandable stents. And after that, we have a good result, a proximal good results. In this lesion, uh, we perform the recanalization of the FSA and the distal artery, the popliteal artery, we put the Minerva balloon for uh, millimeters of diameter. And in the distal lesion, I put uh, the uh, three, millimeter, three millimeters balloon to treat the fibular artery. And then we improve the runoff after treatment, the FSA. So in conclusion, uh, when I use or uh, the Minerva balloon is a, an initial experience. Um, we have another experience, uh, another experience with another device, for example, uh, cords device, and for me, Minerva Balloon uh, really have a good features because uh, we described in the beginning of my presentation about this. And the main features is a low profile, is a good navigation, and the tip was very good. And, and I think that the features of Balloon and can improve the clinical results. In fact, actually, and uh, in uh, an initial experience, and uh, the results results was very good until now. Thanks. Thank you, oh. Dr. Marcelo. Thank you Thank for the you, excellent Marcelo. presentation. Yeah, yeah, you have to it's know. very very impressive. Thank you for sharing us the POBA, POBA as an option for vascular prepare, preparation method. Uh, I, would you enjoy us, the Dr. Lucas and Dr. Ahmad? Could you, do you have any comments or questions for discussions? Uh, Marcelo, congratulations for this brilliant presentation very good cases challenging cases and i would like to ask you uh as you said for the av fistula nowadays we use drug cutting balloons uh, and in your practice for sfa and popliteal disease uh, do you also use drug cutting balloons uh, as a standard of care uh, using all the cases do you have any complaints about the katsanos trial that showed Increased mortality, or don't you don't have any concerns about uh, paclitaxel uh, signal of uh, high mortality in the long term? Do you think this is a, a past issue? We don't have to to worry about this anymore. Yeah, thank you for your question. 
yeah, I, I am concerned about the use of drug eluding balloon in, in my patients. But recently, uh, some uh, studies published that the, uh, there is uh, questions about the use of the drug eluding balloon. I, I reserve, I, I, I think that the option for drug eluding balloon is not for all cases is for some specific case that we have uh, hyperplasia when a uh, pathophysiologic of the obstruction. And, but most of case, the, the drug eluding balloon is um, a good alternative uh, when you think the follow-up of these patients. Uh, but I am concerned and uh, the complication, the systemic complications about Paclitaxel, but and nowadays, recently, I, I, I read some papers that I'm more calm about this, right? Okay, thank you. Okay, yeah. thank you. Thank you for the support of Brosnet. Oh, let me check the chat board. Is there any question? Oh, we have got a question for you, Dr. Maceo. Thanks for the presentation. Is dissection a serious com complication in peripheral intervention? How is it treated normally? Yeah, yeah, thank you. Thank you for asking me. Yeah, and this section is a, is a, a really problem when we in post PTA, because if you keep the lesion about the some dissections, uh, the patient has a, right, a high risk of occluded the treatment. And then in some times I use stents to, to fix the lesion. But normally, uh, and, and nowadays, I am avoiding to use stents because in my experience, and when you use stents, the smart stents or flexible stents in uh, FSA, uh, the follow-up uh, late is not so good because uh, FSA, we have, when the patient walking, the FSA, uh, uh, there is a rotation in, in the artery. And after that, we have problems with stents, fractures, and another problem. And then I, I think uh, I use the, the stents in a specific case when we have a high risk of thrombosis after PTA. And for me, and I think, and I use stents only in the portion of the dissection, and I covered um, 10 and 20 millimeters uh, proximal of the section and 20 and 30 millimeters after the sections is not in all artery, an entire artery. Right? Thank, thank you for answering the question. Um, and uh, may, may I also ask you a technical question? Um, in, in, your, in your clinical practice, I mean, uh, the vascular surgeries, what is, um, uh, what is your most common use castor lens uh, of the balloon? And uh, what is the longest castor lens you, you want? Yeah, uh, please Ella, can you write me your question? For uh, <laughs> I, I understand more clearly. Um, can you see the, the chat yeah, box? Yeah, I hear you. Yeah, I, I, need to, I need to see in the chat box. Wait a minute, please. Uh, yeah, the cath catheter length. Normally, 
depends. Depends on the, the access. I, I like to use the contralateral artery because after uh, the PTA or after I, I stenting of the artery, you keep the, the flow in the artery. When I use, when I cross the, the iliac artery, I prefer uh, shaft, more, uh, longer shaft. And when I have a lesions, for example, fibular artery or femoral superficial artery, uh, the, the more length or the length, or I don't know, I can I say, the, the, the more, lo the longer that the, the balloon, uh, we can better results. For example, in the initial experience of endovascular treatment, uh, we use it short balloons with three or 40 millimeters of length. And the results is not so good. When we use balloons uh, with uh, length, uh, 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 balloons with uh, 150 millimeters or 200 millimeters, the results in FSA and the fibular or tibial or distal arteries uh, uh, is, uh, are be better because uh, the results after arteriograph and the clinical results uh, is is better than when I use the short balloons, right? Yeah. I ask it you. Got it. Got it. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, we I see uh, another question from the chat board. Um, Dr. Maceo, I see some products designed with three markers inside the longer balloon. What do you think of this? Yeah, when, when you have markers, uh, we can put the balloons uh, more, preci more, more precise. And then when we have markers, uh, in the features of balloon is, uh, is good to put the balloon in a correct position. And then for me, uh, when we have markers, uh, I think that is improve the position of, we can uh, uh, position the balloon more precisely. And then I, I, I like this. You like this? <laughs> yeah, I like. Okay. 